All right. Welcome everyone to Creating Balance in Your Work Week, How to Shift from Stress to Success. I always like to start these presentations with a, a kind of a provocative statement. Um, I had somebody tell me this, and it was in one of the moments where I was kind of dart, doubting myself. And, and she said to me, she was an older woman, and she said to me, a better work and personal life awaits if you choose it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look and see the various places that might be holding you back and, and uncover some of the reasons. And some of these things are just not what you would expect. So why is everyone so scattered right now and so stressed? There's a lot of external forces and things, but there are a lot of things that you can control. Um, we are going to take a look at a pretty big elephant in the room, and it's quite interesting. It's not actually what you think it might be. We're going to unpack how we operate as humans and how our bodies and our physiology and our brain and just our natural, um, just the way that we operate as humans um, affects the day that we can have. We'll take a look at how tech hurts us and also how it can help. And I'm hoping that we will have a lot of Q&A um, along with, I'm going to give you some, some fairly concrete and affordable next steps that you can take. So very quickly about me, um, if you just skim down, uh, you'll see that since 1995, which is a lot of years, <laughs> it's not 10 years, it feels like it's 10 years, it's a lot of years, um, I've been working either on or in the accounting. So either actually working in accounting, like doing it, or leading it or actually working for and with accountants and bookkeepers and tax pros. Um, I've been with Liceo from 2020 and um, absolutely love the, the, the layers of the onion that we're starting to peel for helping accountants and bookkeepers have a much better day. But most of you, if you, if you know me, you probably know me from my long tenure at Intuit. So let's talk about accounting. Um, and by counting, I'm meaning accounting, tax, and bookkeeping. I'm meaning as an industry. Um, I passionately believe that it is an incredible profession. Um, you are, uh, you are, you are, you go into it because um, you have great clients. They, you can serve a diversity of businesses. Um, there is a tremendous number of actual problems that you can solve, and they are. Um, they are interesting and uh, fun, and um, and you, your brain sees order. You can make order out of chaos, and you also love helping people. And that's that's the thing that I think ties everyone together is that you are heart led. You have a um, you have a, a a natural inclination to help people have a better life, and I think that. This is what really drives you. And this is also, um, I know it was what drove me when I was in the profession myself working actually on accounting for, for clients and things. And that's also where some of the days might go a little off the trolley because you are derailed from that. So why don't we love our jobs? given all of this awesomeness that you are capable of and you are driving for your, for your, your clients and, uh, and really for the economy in, you know, in, in general, why don't we love our jobs? Well, it turns out we, some folks really don't love it at all. Um, when polled, how meaningful is your job? Over 5,000 accounting pros responded. And mainly, and mostly it got a two, basically on average, a two and a half out of 2.3 out of five stars. There were only a very small percentage that rated it five, four or five stars. So that was really quite depressing to me. I was thinking, oh, gosh, it's such an awesome profession, and there's so many awesome people working in the profession, and you have awesome clients, and you're doing this great work. Why isn't it satisfying and fulfilling and, and, and feeling meaningful on a daily basis? Well, it has to do with frustration. 
And frustration comes about in a in a bunch of different ways. Um, this picture, I think, I think was was really very. I would imagine that very few of you live in this sort of paper filled world, but you can look at her face and see, she's looking there at, you know, late nights, weekends. She's thinking, I don't get to leave here till midnight tonight, and even then, I won't be finished all of this massive amount of work. So there is a, a big volume of work, yes. However. There are also frustrations and roadblocks that stop you from doing the work because actually doing the work is actually pretty fun. And then as you think about it, how many of you are looking to hire help? And perhaps it's because you just feel like you have too much work on your plate. Um, how many of you are thinking, I really need to find someone and then you're feeling like it's daunting to find someone. Um, I've heard people say to me, well, we actually don't have a problem hiring people, but we have a hard time keeping them. We train them and then they leave. Or, um, you know, we bring them in and then they're not quite what we expected. Um, so there's a number of layers, a number of factors to all of these things, the frustration, the overwork, the long hours, and then believing that you need to hire help is is it's usually the first place that people go. Um, however, it might not actually be the that might not actually be the panacea there so we hold i want you to ask you to just hold an open mind as we move through this presentation and the thing i want you to remember is that accounting will be a top 10 profession um, and the scores are going to go up provided that we can control our stress and that is really what this presentation is all about is moving from stress moving out of a stressed and out of control, uh, overwhelmed state to a more calm, successful, uh, um, frictionless state. However, before we get there, we really do need to address an elephant in the room. And when you go back to what, what caused you to become an accountant, to come into the field, um, accounting, bookkeeping, or tax, you had an idea that you were going to help your clients and you have these awesome skills that you have and this amazing brain. You have huge hearts. Um, all of you do. I know you do. And you really wanted to help your clients be successful. And by doing that, in order to get there, you sit down and you do this joyful work where you literally do take the chaos and turn it into order. And then you know what those numbers mean and you're able to predict and, and give people a road, give your clients a roadmap. So half of the job is what you really love to do. But that's where the record kind of, the needle goes off the record. The other half is admin. And no one told you when you became, when you went into the profession, how much darn admin you would have to do. And when I talk, when I think about admin, I think about all of the non-value add things that you need to do. So for example, chasing clients for documents. Oh my gosh. Um, sending things you've already sent, resending, looking, searching. Where is that document? Is it in the portal? Is it in an email? Did the client text it to us? Is it on their, their portal? Uh, does another employee have it? Um, just gathering the documents, just getting everything together the, before that joyful, meaningful work can happen. And this is huge. This is huge because if half of your job is comprised of things that you do not enjoy doing and that is frustrating and is not value added, then that's half of your life at work that is not giving you joy. And so this, this for me is the money slide. You really need to pay attention to this and try and shift the bulk of your day, what you're doing over towards the joyful stuff, the actual accounting, the actual tax, the actual planning, the actual analysis, um, the actual bookkeeping, advising your client, all those things that give you joy. So one of the things I'd like you all to do as you're going through this presentation with me and afterwards is I'd like you to think about um, the times in your day when you are having a really great time and you're and you're really enjoying it. Um, for me, it used to be when I was really crushing a spreadsheet. <laughs> I love my spreadsheets and really like getting to the nubbins and getting the uncovering the insights. I just love that. Um, 
then the, then also pay attention to the things that are dragging you down, the things that you're doing where you just think, oh my gosh, here we go again. And it's a loop. So right now what happens is we are all in a loop. So if you kind of start at the top of the, the loop here in the dark purple, the client is gonna request work from you. Yay, we have a client, cool client wants us. We tell them what we need to do it. So we request the information and then we wait. Wah, wah. And then we hound. We ask them to send it again and then we wait again. And then the client finally responds and then we have to dive and catch and give our all to deliver. And it is a vicious circle. It just goes round and round. And the whole bottom part of this circle is, is dysfunctional. So I wanna unpack why this is happening and really think about what are the, th what are the factors that are coming into play that it should be client requests work, we request the information, the client responds and we, we do the work, right? That, that's what the loop should be. So what is the result of that? Well, um, <laughs> the result is that you're, you're, you're just feeling really stressed out and you, you have something called busy season. And we actually, um, we've all come to just accept, expe just accept and expect it. And um, it, it, I, I wanna challenge this because I don't think it needs to be this way, even though this, this meme is very funny, this poor guy you know, in his basement full of water. Um, I, I think there's just a better way. And so we're going to talk about that. Now, the recipe to sort of quote unquote fix the profession. And, and by the way, this doesn't mean that any of you need to be fixed as humans or that you're doing bad work. It, I don't take any of this personally. Um, I know you do great work and I know that you deliver your work on time and that you have a great amount of care and you have really great staff if you have staff or you yourself are really awesome or both. And, um, and you put great care and, and energy and time into making sure that your clients are well taken care of. But there are some biological and some tech parts and then also, the, so the recipe really is four parts. <laughs> it's one part human biology and we're gonna talk about that, that in a minute, how we're wired. We're going to talk about technology and how it can help us or hurt us. And then we're also gonna talk about the things that we can do together to help each other. So what I'd like to do is to, first of all, start with our biology. And the biggest thing is that we are hardwired to respond to others. And so what this means is when you are on a complex problem, like in my role, that was a big spreadsheet, um, I did com complicated revenue rec recognition analysis for pre-IPO startups was, was my last sort of hands-on accounting job. And there were a lot of really interesting insights and things that I could bring to the table to my clients. And I really loved getting into it because I could show them that with just constructing the contract a slightly different way, they could recognize more revenue and, and legally, it was no, no smoke or mirrors or anything, nothing nothing um, underhanded, um, but I needed to present it in a way that was understood. So when I was working on these complex problems and all of a sudden my phone would ring or I'd get a ping you know, from Messenger or something would happen, um, I was immediately context shifted. So shifted out of context. And then I would have to put myself back into context and so there's so there's very very there's no such thing as multitasking. You actually cannot work on several different things at once. And when you're working on a complex problem and you are distracted from it, it takes ages to get back into it. And there was a Cal CP, a Cal um, a Cal Berkeley study that was um, University of California study that was shown that it takes 27 minutes to get back to like really back into the groove once you've been distracted. And the other thing is, is that we are built to move. So you cannot sit for more than, you can't sit and you certainly can't focus for more than about 90 minutes at a time. You have to get up and move. And so the proof of that is, we already talked about, you know, how do you feel when you're on a complex problem and you get, you get, you get your, your, your distractions, you get pulled off it. Um, 
but also consider your off hour work productivity versus your on hour work productivity. And what I mean by that is usually when there's an audience and we're doing this presentation, we'll say, when's your best work time? And hands will go up and they'll say, oh, I love, you know, after dinner when I can work for a few hours and there's nobody in the office or I'm just, you know, completely like my kids are in bed or, um, you know, clients aren't calling me. Well, think that one through. What that actually means is that you are spending your personal time doing work. And that's because your work time is not allowing you to do, do the work. So I want you to think very, very strong, very, very seriously about how you're spending your days. And I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some tips and things that you can take with you um, to stack the deck in favor of allowing you to actually work during your work time and then be able to turn off. And then the other thing I want to want to challenge you is to build in a 15 minute walk every day. And all you have to do is do it once and then you come back and you think, oh, that's amazing. My brain is fresh and I can focus. And um, so these are these are things that you really need to pay attention to. And this is biology. This is not anything specific. It's not personal. It's humans. These are how humans are wired. So let's talk about some practical steps that you can take. Um, the first is that you want to mute everything. Slack, Teams, social media, other channels. And if you leave the alerts on only for direct mes mentions, so if I at Davida or Davida at Allison's, then I know it's important. It's like, hey, I'm sorry. And also train your team to think twice before sending that message. So I don't, if I'm going to be asking Chris, my CEO, I, let's say I just have a quick question. I think very carefully about whether I need to send it because I could take him off what he's doing and cost, and he, we've got here 15 minutes, but I know the Cal C CPA, the, sorry, I keep saying Cal CPA. I know that the Cal Berkeley study was 25, was 27 minutes. <clears throat> so it could be between 15 and 15 and, uh, and, and, tw and, you know, in 25 minutes, that cost means that if you pull somebody off what they're doing and what they're working or they pull you off, um, all of that time adds up and then you've got to make it up somehow, right? So that's where your evenings and your weekends are coming in. And if you bundle the non-urgent items and you address during a reserved time, so maybe it's in the morning or maybe in the afternoon or maybe just after lunch or whatever, um, or via a low urgency channel, so email. So we pick the channels that we are going to be we're going to be to be using. And then um, you want to turn on focus time settings on your devices, your calendars. And what that means is that people will see that. Oh, Allison's focusing on something. So I do that whenever I need to do some writing or whether I need to create a, a marketing program or whether I need to, I'm maybe creating a new, a new presentation. Um, I'll turn on focus time and I'll let the team know I'm, I'm going dark for, you know, an hour or 90 minutes. And then everybody does their thing. And then afterwards we can talk and then taking breaks and moving or moving when talking to others. So that's a really great idea. If you do one-on-ones with your team, do walking one-on-ones. That works particularly well for a remote team because you can get out and you can still take notes if you wanna take a little notebook with you or you can take them on your phone. Um, so it can be very focused work time, but um, walking and talking is a very creative way of solving your need to move and getting your brain open and stimulated and refreshed. And then you want to reciprocate these behaviors with others. So if you are the leader in your firm, you wanna make sure that you're not just saying, hey, everybody don't bother me during my focus time, um, but I'm gonna bother you during yours. No, 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 you reciprocate those behaviors with others. Now, Davida, I just wanna stop for a moment. Are there any questions that have come up? I'm not actually able to see the chat. Not just yet, just a lot of comments around uh, the items that you're talking about so far, but Our people is definitely a huge task for uh, for everyone. And it's really making sure that they know where all of those places you actually have to gather from, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a big list. Everyone should, everyone should make a list of all the places they're having to look for documents because that is huge. The more places that you have to look, the more channels that you give your clients, um, the bigger the swirl for your staff. 
So if you would like to have more information about these concepts, um, there's an author that I strongly recommend. His name's Cal Newport, and he's written two, work, two books, Deep Work and A World Without Email. And both of those are worth a, worth a read. Um, the, if you, if you, uh, you know, th th those are very, very good as, as a leader to read, but also to, to ask your team to read as well. They're, they're kind of game changing. Um, and what will happen is, is if you move to this model of giving people focused time, um, turning off all these distractions, and most importantly for yourself so that you can get your own work done, and reciprocating this as a team, moving to a team of we're only going to use um, Teams messages if it's really important, or Teams or Slack, um, or we're going to allow people to respond on their own time. So you can still use Teams and Slack if you want little off-the-cuff questions or whatever, but don't interrupt someone's focus time. That's what the most important thing is. Give them time to do that joyful work because the more joyful work you stack your day with, the more, <laughs> again, sorry, I keep going back to the spreadsheets. The more spreadsheets you let them create and really get into and dig into, um, the more results they will drive and the better everybody will feel. Um, and you will stop feeling so distracted and so pulled in different directions. And your your team will 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 steadily embrace the changes as you go. You may have to remind people. I know sometimes if I get really excited, I want to tell Chris and I kind of I kind of bounce into his world through either Teams or or another channel. Maybe I might text him and no, I don't do that anymore. He he actually will very gently bring me back and say this this would this should have been an email or um I would have preferred if he'd saved this for our one on one. So that's the other thing. You can save things for one-on-one -on -one with your staff. Um, I keep notes now. And so I don't, I try not to pounce on my team too much. And as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I need to, you have to be constantly reminding each other um, to do this. But when you move to this model, stress and anxiety decreases, productivity increases, and everyone feels respected and that they have space and time to do their work. Now, the the bear the another question that comes up is, well, isn't tech supposed to solve all these problems? Like, isn't that why we have our we have technology? Because it was supposed to make everything faster, you know, do more with less, you know, all of that. Well, I think I would propose that it actually made things worse. Now, some of you may be old enough to remember when you worked in an office, you didn't we weren't remote, you worked in the office with your team or maybe it was just you and whatever, you worked in the office and you had these things called <laughs> red weld folders and the flexible files. And you would put your work papers and everything, everything would be in the folder. And so you could go to the folder, grab it, and you had everything that you needed. And I, I hope some folks are remembering that. And if, you, if, you're, if you're too young to remember that and you think, wow, that was weird, um, just try and imagine what it was like, because it was it was a, a kind of a slightly different world. It wasn't really that long ago, um, but everything really was aggregated into one place. Now, it didn't facilitate remote working. It did not facilitate um, the collaboration that can come from cloud. So it wasn't perfect, but it did. It really did work. Um, it also didn't collab. It also didn't uh, facilitate people working on the same things at the same time. So there was there was some issues there and that's why the cloud came up. But what happened was, if you look at the right, now we've got way too many places to look. We've got way too many tools. We've got um, things coming at us from all different angles. And what happens is you still got a little bit of paper. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's just been, it's made, it's just been an explosion. And, the great news is, is that we're on the tipping point of a change that is going to bring things back into a more um, sane and sensible and and um, um, less less fr fr friction less friction in you know environment, and that has to do mainly with how many methods your clients use to communicate and work with you. And so CX stands for client experience. So if you look from the left, that red weld scenario 
was really a client experience 1.0, meaning it wasn't great for the clients. It was pretty good for the accountants, actually. They had a pretty predictable day. Um, everything was all in one place. And most of them could go home at, at, at you know, at reasonable hours. Um, you still had the busy season and there was all of that, that peak season if you did tax, but everything else was kind of quite predictable. Um, but the clients didn't have a lot of ways to get in touch with the firm. It was quite rigid. So email, phone, fax, snail mail, and you could go in in person. Um, documents were traditionally handed to people, which meant that they were on, they were always 30 to 60 to 90 days late. So they weren't actionable. So what happened was, is that the tech forward firms, which is client experience 1.5, moved to modern systems where you still got email, you've got phone, but now you got your cell phone in your office, you've got some snail mail, but you've added everything else. <laughs> you've now got electronic signatures, you've got a document portal, you got text, people text you with pictures, um, email encryption, social media messages, and there's probably many more places. Um, so you really need to take a good look at how many, how many channels you're giving your clients to communicate with you. And client experience 2.0, has a lot of advantages because it moves all of this into one app. So you have less email, you'll have still have some phone, you'll still have some snail mail, you'll still meet with your clients. But what happens is your clients only have one easy place to communicate with your firm and you have one place to look for the documents. So, so we went from very few to ah, too many. Now we're moving back to, to fewer. And you know if you have a problem if you hear these things in your firm. Um, oh, I didn't check my email. And you're like, okay, I sent you an email. I asked you for the documents or I gave you your answer and you didn't check your email. Okay. Um, can I text you a picture? Can I send, can I text you the document? I don't have a scanner. Can I text you the document? Can I text you my social? No, no, you cannot. You cannot text me, text you my social. You cannot text your social. And, no, but you probably hear people say it. Um, can you resend the files? That one's horrible, isn't it? You've already sent it and they can't find it, right? The link you sent expired. I hate that one. Um, I'll have to wait until I'm in the office to scan those documents. Um, I can't log into the portal. Do you have a mobile app? So if you are hearing these things from your clients, these the, these are these are symptoms. These are symptoms that you are ha that you have a problem with your with the experience that you're you're giving your clients to work with you. Now, I want to be super super clear. Client experience is not client service. You are. I know you are giving great service to your clients, and I know this because you have repeat you have repeat business. You you are in business. You are successful. You're in business. Um, you wouldn't have clients if you gave if you gave bad service. So client service is not the same as client experience. Experience is how easy is it to do work with you? And all of these things are telling you that email in a portal does not work. It is not a great way to anchor your client experience on email in a portal. And so I wanna propose a new loop. And this is based on the client experience 2.0 concept. And Basically, the idea is the client's going to request the work. We request the information. Tech is actually going to help the clients get the data. Tech will remind the clients so you don't have to be that badger and remind them. The clients are much more likely to deliver on time. You do this great work and you feel really good doing it. And um, Lucio is a fantastic app that you can look at. If, um, if you're using it already, then you probably understand where it fits in your in your in your 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 practice um, and how it's helping you get information quickly. If you're not using it, um, understand that it's a it's a client it's an app that you can give your clients that allows them to do everything they need to do with your firm electronically, and your team can see everything. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is the new loop, and you will notice that there's no waiting or having to rush and get things done. Um, tax. Uh, Tax practices in particular have reported that since they've moved to Lysio, they're able to flatten the tax season, meaning the clients are sending information in as they get it. So in January, 
they start sending things in in January, they just snap a photo of the, of just like on your online banking app, when you um, take a picture of a check and it deposits electronically, that's the, the built-in scanner for Lysio has that. So, so tech can help. Tech can help if you're using the right tech and thinking about it in the right way. Now let's talk about some of the things that we've done at Lysio to step up and take take the take the take it one step further. Now the first thing is is we have created a we've created a a it's a not it's actually a non Lysio community. Um, there's a tiny section in it for Lysio, but the rest is all about how to um, work with OneNote or G Suite or um, you know, security best practices. Um, there are courses that you can take. There, there is a community you can ask and answer questions. You can sign up for live events. So the Grove, I'm going to ask Davida to put the um, link into the into the chat there for you. Um, it's just the Grove.thinkific.com. It's free to join, and um, do tell your 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 colleagues. The only thing we ask is that don't invite your small businesses in because it's really for accountants, bookkeepers, and tax pros, and um, really to help you learn all of the things and the tips and tricks and things, and and really focused on how to. Um, there's not a lot of fluff in there. It's it's how to. Then I would encourage you to run some tests like we've been running at Lysio, and if you are feeling like you've like, okay, let's say you you make the changes that we've proposed where you're going to have this kind of new way of working, where you're going to mute the distractions, give everybody focused time to work, do walking meetings, um, you know, dedicate time for yourself to get actual work done so that you're feeling better. Um, one of the things you can do <clears throat> is if you still think that you've got too much work to do, is hire some brand new college grads. And um, let them tell you what's what's wrong and how to and how to correct it. And it's really interesting since we've done that at Lysio, the um, the number of new ideas and the ways of doing things has just exploded. Um, so you need to be open to that. Be open to new ways of of working and um, and respect the younger folks because by 2025, this is an interesting stat for you. By 2025. The millennials who are, um, it's from uh, 1996 through people who were born, um, sorry, uh, people who were born um, 1982 through 1996. So these aren't kids. Um, 1982 means that they are 40 years old uh, now. And by 2025, they will be uh, 43. Um, they are going to be 75% of the workforce. So including your staff, your staff and your clients. So you really want to bring the younger people in and get them to um, help you change up things and then be open to their ideas. The other thing is, is it makes sleep a very, very, very high priority. Um, if you do not, you actually um, will continue to suffer and you will never feel your best. Um, Matthew Walker, PhD, wrote a book called Why We Sleep. I highly recommend it it basically says that if you don't if you don't sleep if you don't sleep well enough you will never be operating at peak and you will always be playing catch up and i actually have my Uro ring right here i don't know if you guys can see it um i i wear it every day all day and it has helped me get the data that i need um, to understand the connection between my lifestyle choices and my sleep um, so I, I strongly recommend that you make sleep a very, very high priority. The other thing is, is uh, fitness. And you don't have to go crazy insane. Um, on the left here is the Peloton app. And the Peloton app, you do not need the bike or the treadmill. You can give the Peloton app to your team for the princely sum of $14.95 per month per employee. So it's not an expensive benefit to give and most some of your team won't, won't want it but some might want it and the thing is there's yoga there's strength training there's stretching there's running there's hardcore boot camps if you want to do those um, 
but offering a fitness option to your team and allowing them to say, I'm going to take a 15 minute walk during the day, making that accepted part of your culture is going to go a long way to helping people relieve anxiety and focus more. Um, and again, those walking meetings to me are gold. I have one per day and I absolutely love it. It I, I just feel, I come back, I feel refreshed. I've done work while I'm walking. So it's like, I'm kind of doubling up on two very, very good things. So I strongly recommend you do that. The other thing is the, then the focus time. So, you know, no, no instant messages, no, no slacks, no team, um, have dedicated focus time for, for answering, answering questions for the team. And, um, and uh, and then you can basically uh, everybody will know that they can you know they give tell them what to do like if they have a question they can write it down or they can try to self solve it um, and only at message you if it's really really urgent. So to recap the the main things you can do to have a much better day got to tame the noise. And I've given you a bunch of different ways to do it, but you really want to focus on those digital disruptions. Um, focus. If you do 60 to 90 minutes of hard work, then you move. The digital distractions actually are going, like taming those digital distractions, that's actually going to fund that time that you need to move because it, it makes sense. If you're not being pulled off for 15 minutes every time, ah, you know, you can move for 15 minutes and it's not going to even affect your productivity for the day. In fact, your productivity will go up. Um, you definitely want to talk this through with your staff. Um, you know, help your clients and staff to focus on what matters. And if you are not using Lysio, I strongly recommend you set up a demo. Um, you can just go to lysio.me. It's not lysio.com, it's lysio.me and just sign up for a demo. And then of course, share what, wor what works with your peers and your community. And then I just have a couple of slides. I'm just going to fly through these and then we've got some time for, um, for questions. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. So if you're worried about giving your clients something that's difficult for them to log in, like a portal is difficult for clients to log in, they can't do it on their mobile phone. Lysio is so easy. There's four different ways for them to log in, including their face. So most people can log in with their face, right? You carry your face around with you. You can log in with your face. Although it is pretty funny if I have a mask on, I can't log in with my face. So, um, so then I would log in with I would log in with Google, or I would, or or you can use your name and password, or log in with your Office three sixty five. Um, we are in the business to help you provide the best client experience in the profession, and um, it's all in one. It's collaborative. It is a secure invitation only network, meaning that only you and your clients are in there. You, your staff, and your clients. There's nobody else. There's no spammers, fishers, marketing emails, nothing. There's nothing else in there except for you and your clients. And it is a very quiet space because your clients are only going to see what you need from them and what they have asked from you. So it makes it very, very easy for you to get information. So instead of emailing them and waiting for a response, you can message them. The cool thing is, is that they can answer on their time. However, if you use the text messaging feature, they typically will answer in about six minutes. It's pretty cool. And it's 100% secure. It's, it's uh, we use the, um, same encryption that military uses and it's encrypted at rest and in transit so if they send you their social security number on this form of text it's not going over the cell phone rails it's going through lysio and it's it's very secure um, i mentioned before that clients don't usually have a scanner so um, you can, you have a bunch of different ways to attach a document in Lysio. You can scan the document, you can upload it from a photo library, you can import the file from your computer or Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive or Smart Vault. Um, we have lots of integrations. But the cool thing is, is you get crystal clear PDFs. You're not getting a fuzzy photo. So the best analogy is when you, the, the best thing for you to think about what the experience is like is just think about your online banking. And think about how easy it is for you to snap the photo and how the how the app knows and it can just center the the 
and it knows it says oh move closer or whatever and then it corners it and then and you get this beautiful pdf um this is a cool feature that will help you be more productive which is called lisio dispatch and so in this screenshot we are working in um, quickbooks online in craig's design and landscaping sample file and we're sending a profit loss to leslie leslie smith like directly so anything you can print to pdf you don't actually have to leave your accounting system um, or your tax system so and I just want to pause on that. Anything you can print to PDF, you can send to your clients securely with just one step. So instead of printing it to PDF, saving it to the portal, and then constructing the email with the link, you know, sending it to the client, and then the client doesn't respond, and then maybe you got to send it later, or you got to help them log in, or you got to reset the link, all those things, they literally get it on their phone, ping, and they can just open it. And it was, seconds after you sent it. So you're going to have a much better communication with your client and the documents will just flow both ways. You can send them to them and they can send them to you. Your staff will have full, full visibility to anything outstanding for all across all the clients they've been assigned to. So there's no silos. So the cool thing about it is that, um, you know, if if uh, if Jasper, um, if Emma Kane, you know, called in from Portland Accounting and, and you know, I was I was the client, I was the staff person. And I I said, well, hey, Emma, it looks like we need to have you um, sign an ACH form. Can you take care of that now? Um, so it, any staff person can help the whole team succeed. You can see the whole string there. And then you can keep clients on alerts with the, on, on track with the text alerts and the automotive, automated mobile reminders. And so that is the end of my presentation today. Um, I actually don't have a clock with me, so I have no idea how I did on timing. Um, but Davida, are there any are there any questions that anyone would like to like to cover? Feel free to put them into the QA. Uh, as we have a couple of more minutes uh, to take questions, we did have some comments. Um, one about how a boundary with clients could be asking them to try to solve it for 15 minutes before calling or before reaching out. And then another one about. That's a good um, one. Yeah. And actually yeah. with staff, that would work with staff too, wouldn't it? Um, if you could, if you could have your staff try to solve it first, right? The 15 minute buffer, I like that a lot. Yeah. And then how many times um, have you had a problem and it's really complex, but then you go on lunch and all of a sudden everything clicks, clicks in. And I think that really speaks to um, getting up and moving, taking right. um, concentration in set periods of time and that right. focus time. How would you say, Allison, um, while we wait for some questions from the audience, um, how would you say that you protect um that focus time and really make sure that work that you set out to do gets done yeah so having <clears throat> having your priorities is important um you you want to make sure that you really are working on the things that are going to move the dial rather than the the little i don't know if you've ever seen that um that demonstration where um they 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 show a glass jar a big big like a imagine a big giant mayonnaise jar you know like a hospital mayonnaise jar really big um and they put rock the big rocks in and there's only a few big rocks that will fit in there right and then they start to put the smaller rocks in and some more smaller rocks and then they pour the sand in and the sand is endless the sand will fill up the whole thing and so that's a great analogy for focus on the things that are going to make the difference and um, and that are going to drive the business forward and make the most difference for your clients rather than all of those little ankle biter gnat things. And that's why you have to fundamentally and foundationally solve the client document issue and the client response time issue. And the only way you can solve that is to make it easy for your clients to work with your firm. And by easy, I mean seamless, easy, drop dead, because Unless you solve that foundational problem, you will always be stuck in, I don't know, it's like chasing. You'll always be stuck in that, that loop of the client is not giving me what I need. I don't have what I need. I have to chase what I need. I'm frustrated. I can't get my work done. If you, once you shift to, I have everything I need, then you get to choose how you, how you spend your day 
and you will know based on the deadlines, based on the value, the client value, based on where you're going, where you are going to, you know, add your most value. Um, you will know what to work on. That'll that'll be the biggest bang for your buck. And the other thing I would say is, if you have a team, you really should go to the Grove and take some of Rob Smith's training, because the Grove has courses on there for how you can basically set things up so that even your most junior person can follow your procedures and but you have to document them and you have to you have to create a system that is replicatable no matter who is doing it no matter what level of staff person so don't assume that you as the leader of the firm have to do everything you don't so i hope that helps allison could you tell us a little bit more about who rob is Oh, yeah. So Rob Smith is our senior um, content. Uh, he's our content lead. He's a, a senior technical content. And he's also a CPA, uh, former CPA, actually. He um, he doesn't have his firm anymore, but he teaches OneNote. Uh, he teaches, oh, he teaches the whole Microsoft 365 suite, the Google suite. Um, and what he does is he takes it and translates it into actionable things like the two-minute tax return review process. Wouldn't that be awesome to be able to have everything in one place for you to review the tax return, right? So Rob is Rob is is somebody worth uh, worth following for sure, and he's on the Grove, and you can find his uh, his his curriculum there. Awesome. Um, so could you just remind us uh, the books that you mentioned? You mentioned two books, one on deep work yeah. and sleep. Yeah, there's yeah, there's um, Matthew Walker is uh, the book is called Why We Sleep, and Cal Newport uh, wrote two books. Uh, one is called Deep Work, and that's the one where you really the takeaway is you have to make time for deep work, otherwise uh, people are not happy and fulfilled as as humans. Um, that's the joyful work, um, and then the World Without Email, and in World Without Email he talks about all the different ways that. Um, email is really killing us and, and all the different distractions and things. And we are not able to reach our peak as humans if we are constantly reactive. And I think that reactivity leads into one of the comments we got about how um, client leadership can be uh, difficult and less cooperative. So when all the leaders are buying into more productivity, more earning, get work done to move yeah. faster. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it does, it does require some conversation and some, you know, some discipline. Um, however, accountants, bookkeepers, and tax pros are really good at process and discipline. Um, you're very good at it. You have everything you need. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, I think we might be. Do you want to come off camera uh, on camera, Davida? I think we might be. We might be at the end here. We we can end early if we want to. Yeah. yeah we're just a minute off. So I think we, if we have nothing else, then yeah. Thank you, can. everybody. I hope this has been useful for you. I hope you got a couple of nuggets that can help you um, think through some of the stresses that you are feel you may be feeling. And maybe you gain some insights that will allow you to take action on them. Um, the Lucio team stands ready to to uh, to help, and um, and we really appreciate your time today. Great, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, good i good ideas to ponder. Uh, the, most of the ideas in here, by the way, weren't weren't mine. I just collected them. <laughs> I just got to present them. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to end now. Um, and uh, please have a wonderful week. And thank you for your time.